Coming up on Tech News Today, we have some very sad news. The death of the traditional ThinkPad keyboard by Lenovo. More coming shortly. Also, AMD launches their Trinity processor, and video seems to want to eliminate the need for game consoles. And Chris Null joins us. We'll have more next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for our Tuesday, May 15th, 2012. Tech News Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the easy way to sell your iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Android smartphones from your home or office so you can get the latest versions. Get a risk-free quote that's good for 30 days at gazelle.com. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. I'm Chad Johnson. And we're very happy to welcome back Christopher Knoll from chrisknoll.com, as well as a blogger for Intuit, one of the many tendrils of his growing empire. How's it going, Chris? Ah, oh, we suddenly can't hear Chris. What happened? Wonderful. Did you, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. did you sit on your mute button? All right. <laughs> My empire still rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the show, Chris. Always good to have you on. Uh, let's start. You know, we've got lots of Facebook IPO news. We even have some Google Oracle news. But by golly, we have a good old-fashioned laptop line announcement. That's right, computers. We're going to talk about computers on Tech News today because Lenovo unveiled its new lines of think pads and idea pads. So there's some general specs on these things. Ivy Bridge inside, USB 3.0. And what's likely to get the most attention, new keyboards. New keyboards? So that ThinkPad, venerable, old-style keyboard, no. gone. It's gone. No blue enter key. Exactly. Uh, and it's more, I love the ThinkPad keyboard. More the island style. Now, while... while the that island has, style? What does that They mean? call it island or they call it chiclet. It's the... With their space. Means it shows up late? Or does it have pineapple on it? <laughs> I don't believe any of those is, is accurate or okay. are, are accurate, but I, I believe... I can't tell if you're kidding. Do you love... The keyboard? I, no, I'm serious. Okay. I love the ThinkPad right. keyboard. A lot right. of people love that keyboard, keyboard. And okay. that's one of the things that when Lenovo bought IBM's PC business, they're like, don't change that keyboard. They finally did it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Nate Ralph at The Verge says, the new keyboard doesn't disappoint. Okay, so hopefully people... Uh, that's almost damning with faint praise, well, Nate. Let, let's find out what happens. I'm sure there will be a bunch of, of posts about this if it does disappoint. Uh, also included, let's get past the keyboard, uh, Rapid Boot and Boot Shield, which brings boot times to under 30 seconds. Lenovo says that boot time is about... 40% faster than typical Windows 7. It's pretty sad that 30 seconds is, is fast, but it is. It's not bad, yeah. 30 seconds. I mean, it used to be like two minutes for me with my old 400 megahertz machine. Uh, rapid charge, which brings up your battery to 80% charge <laughs> in as little as 30 minutes. Faster than a 400 megahertz machine. <laughs> and like some Superman. Of, so here's some standouts, though, because there's a lot of different lines out there. There's the X version, there's the T, W, and the L series, and there's the idea pads as well. The standouts... It's got to be the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Mm -hmm. It's a 14-inch Ultrabook, 3 pounds. Lenovo claims it's the world's lightest uh, notebook. 16, yeah, a 14-inch notebook, that is. 1,600 by 900 display, which is a bump from the old X1. It's got a carbon fiber roll cage. 3G broadband is optional. Now, price is not given, and it's going to be available in the summer. Does the roll cage mean when you go off-road? Uh... Yeah, when you're off-roading with your ThinkPad X1, you've got to make sure it can handle the bumps. But it's Actually, also... this looks like a really good-looking laptop. Lenovo's always been really smart about the way they build their machines because they always have the, okay, you're going to drop it probably. You're going to use it in business. It's going to survive a fall, most likely. Also, there's the X230T convertible tablet, 12-inch ultra-portable, and it has LTE. So if you want to stay on the go with an ultra portable, you have this option. Then there's the 430S, which brings Thunderbolt. That's interesting. And this thing's going to cost and about 1400 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so $1,400. So there's a whole bunch of them. And Chris, you have an Ivory Bridge uh, idea pad, right? I do, right on my desk. Um, it's got the new keyboard. In fact, these are the same keyboards. If you saw idea pads from late last year, they're rolling that keyboard onto all of the uh, idea pad and ThinkPad line. What do you so think you of the keyboard? experience it now. Uh, I I am a diehard ThinkPad user from way back, just like you, and uh, I've used both keyboards extensively. I still like the old style. I figure I'll get used to the new one. It's not terrible. It's better than most island-style keyboards or chiclet keyboards, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do not. I mean, I like most things island-style, just in general, uh, but the island-style <laughs> sure. keyboard is not 
It's not something. But I for love. track point fans, they didn't get rid of the track point in that middle. That eraser head's still there. I, I was one of the, I guess, one of the few people who doesn't. The nub. Ever, I never take my hands off the keyboard. I used to not do that with my Lenovo, so I would constantly be on that track point. And that to me is kind of this small like nod to, yeah, we know you're going to be ticked if we remove this. But the keyboard change, I think, will get a lot of people pretty ticked off. These are some pretty sweet looking laptops. I have to admit, uh, Lenovo's Lenovo's doing a good job. Although I'm very skeptical about the keyboard change. Uh, we've got a wealth of news coming out of Facebook's IPO as it gets closer and closer. It looks like it's going to happen this week. Yeah, it's IPO week for Facebook. And it's funny, you know, you'd think that they would have been in a quiet period, but Facebook has been pretty vocal. <laughs> in fact, it's can't keep them out of the news. This is the loudest quiet try. period we've ever seen. Yeah, so fa- Facebook has filed new paperwork, an amendment basically for its IPO. They've upped the share price range. It started out as a as a as a peak of 34, 29 to 34 was the range. Now, they've they've nudged that up a little bit from 34 to 38 dollars per share, which puts it back up to that 100 billion valuation that we had seen way back in, I guess it was February, um, they are expected to price their stock officially Thursday afternoon. There is also updated language on their uh, uh, acquisition of Instagram. Of course, they bought Instagram for a billion dollars. The deal is expected to close in 2012 now, says Facebook. Previous document said the deal would close in quarter two of 2012, and that was very explicit. Quarter two is nowhere to be found anymore, they're saying, this year, and obviously... Uh, people are speculating that this might have to do with the FTC investigation into the purchase of Instagram, which is pretty standard when acquisitions are of this price. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to happen. And we just that Facebook is six, being a little six, less optimistic about closing. Yeah, six months or more, it might delay it. And that would that would be consistent with what they're saying here. Right. Now, analysts, of course, are weighing in as they do uh, as far <laughs> as AP, uh, IPOs go. Um, Stern Agni analyst Arvind Bhatia says, buy it. He has a buy rating on Facebook, and he has a target price of $46. Now, that's pretty high, but he noted mobile growth and the Chinese market are two very, very good indications of if Facebook does this right, they could triple their revenue growth in as little as five years. Now, not everybody agrees with these analyst claims and says, you know, this is absolutely overpriced. Um, People, depending on who you ask, are very bullish on Facebook or think that it's just a passing fad. In fact, Or you look at the previous IPOs, Groupon... Came out really strong and then dived. And, and several others really have come strong, out really strong and then dived. But Groupon had also, be con- had also been compared to a Ponzi scheme before they IPO'd. <laughs> so it's very, think, yeah, it's, it's hard to compare the two companies. I'm not necessarily saying that that's what they were, but I think that they, you know, they had fewer users, uh, fewer revenue and, and, and maybe fewer uh, prospects. It's just of, mo- of the lately most IPOs have have dropped down after their initial release. So That's Facebook true. would be bucking the trend. Facebook would be bucking the trend, but it's also not like other companies. Facebook yep. is a huge company that um, has been very successful where others have not. Uh, there was a poll, Associated Press and CNBC polled 1,000 people and said, well, you know, what do you think about Facebook, basically? Let's, let's, get, let's get the public's opinion. About half of them, a little over half, called Facebook a passing fad. Like wearing an onion on your belt. That's right. 51% have a favorable impression of the company. 23% say, no, actually it's unfavorable. Again, about half of the people polled believed that this initial asking price is too high. And by the way, they were polled this before Facebook ended up bumping up its initial asking price, the range anyway. And there's a uh, story on our subreddit that's actually from April 30th, which is why it's not in our lineup. But it's a Forbes article talking about how Facebook and Google uh, are actually fighting the last decade's battle right now. Uh, and, and, and the point he makes is, it's kind of consistent with these poll numbers, I think, that we, we had a bunch of uh, successful companies in Web 1.0, and then when everything moved to social, they were still fighting the portal battle, and a lot of them suffered because of that. Mm-hmm. And they say everything has gone to mobile, and yet Facebook and Google are still fighting the social battle. And, and, and Google, Google's actually trying to get into the social game because it's a Web 1.0 company. It's yeah. way behind. Facebook is winning the social battle, but it's not making an elegant translation to mobile. And that's where the new battle should be. And and so it could end up like a MySpace. Not necessarily die, but become like a Yahoo. Or become the company that buys all the successful mobile companies. You like could, Instagram, you, for example. You can look at Apples. You can look at IBMs as, as examples that buck the trend. And one of the ways they do that is incorporate the people who know how to take advantage of the new trend. Yeah, they got money. Uh, along with Instagram, Facebook, Aqua hired 
meaning it's not an acquire of the company so much as the employees, photo sharing service, mobile fo- photo sharing service, Lightbox, today. <laughs> Just a couple days before their IPO. I mean, they are really down to the wire at this point. Uh, they picked up the engineering talent, uh, which is seven members of Lightbox. It's London-based company. All of those seven members will join the company. So it's a full aqua hire, as they say. But Facebook isn't actually acquiring their data. So all the user data that Lightbox has um, in their service will be wiped out, actually. Users have until June 15th to download all of their information that might be on Lightbox's servers, and the company will shut down after that. They will, they will, the employees will become part of Facebook, and Lightbox will cease to exist. Although they do say they'll be open sourcing some of their code for Lightbox and posting it on GitHub for other people to use. So Facebook has been busy. They bought Instagram, they bought Glance, uh, last week, or Glancy, I guess, depending I on how you read a double Glancy. E. Glancy. Glancy, that's why I've heard it which is a pa- passive location person, mobile app as yeah. well. So all of a sudden, Facebook's mobile presence, it, it's a little bit yet to be seen how this is all going to look in another six months. But they're certainly buying products and acquiring people who do mobile. And in the case of Light, uh, Lightbox, they were predominantly focused not just on mobile, but on coding for Android. So, one could think, well, Instagram, although they have a they have an Android app and it's been pretty well received for a long time, they were very iOS based. And I, I think a lot of people think of Instagram as kind of a a product that works well within the Apple ecosystem. Lightbox, a little bit more associated with Android, so they're covering their bases, trying as, to anyway. As Facebook gets bigger and bigger and does all these acquisitions and picking up talent, I mean, we're going to see if they're going to go the Yahoo route, or acquire everything. And mismanage, and that led to a disaster. Or what they're doing, it looks like what they're doing, though, but they've done this with Gowalla. They picked up everybody. They mm-hmm. figured out how to integrate that properly into Facebook. It's really about the management here. And Facebook has a pretty pretty strong management head when it comes to not just Zuckerberg, but, but uh, is it Sheryl Sandberg? Yep. She's pretty much the adult in charge over at Facebook. And she's been able to steer you know the company into more and more profitability that people probably wouldn't even expect. It's like, how are you going to make money on this? Well, they figured out a way, and they, they're going to IPO pretty huge. So, I mean, if, if they can continue their management stru- uh, structure and, and being able to integrate these uh, people and technologies in a way that's not like these separate arms, but actually, actually is one thing in Facebook, they're probably going to do very well. Now, one last piece of news to add here. GM uh, announced they plan to stop advertising on Facebook. They say it's not because they hate Facebook. They're going to keep their Facebook pages, but they they just move their money around from time to time. That's not the kind of news Facebook likes to see the week of their IPO. Chris, we've, we've thrown out a lot of news around Facebook here. Uh, what do you make of their prospects as they finally become a public company? You know, by Monday, they'll be publicly traded. That's kind of crazy to think. I, I think back to... Uh the Netscape IPO, uh, and, I, and I'm, I know I'm not the only one here old enough to remember that. Oh, I, I, bought, yeah. I bought that stock. Uh, this is before I was a tech journalist even. Bought that stock the opening week, and I think I sold it a couple weeks later. And I was so thrilled to make uh, you know twenty dollars a share on an IPO like that. And it was it was all the news. I mean that was the that was the biggest financial news of almost of the 90s that was the boom days and netscape was i know the poster i know and yeah. maybe they're coming back i mean i i can't imagine what this ipo is going to do i, I think this is going to be the financial story of the year uh watching this stock it's going to be the next google uh, that everyone's going to want to get in on so you don't think it's you think it's going to buck the trend the recent trend of ipos and say no it's it's just going to keep going up i do i mean you look at the other companies you're talking about that haven't performed a well, groupon and zynga these are not companies that are in the league that Facebook is in. Uh, in fact, Zynga is no perceived companies. as having their entire business built on Facebook's platform. And they do. I think that's a legitimate that's a g- legitimate criticism of Zynga. And, and they've tried hard to get out from underneath that, that weight. Um, and I don't know if they can. But Facebook, I mean, now face, people, people talk about Facebook in the same breath they talk about Google and Microsoft and Apple. I mean, these are, these are A-list companies that... Uh, uh, that really have no that really have no uh, major co- competition uh, when it comes to getting mindshare. Do you think they can translate to mobile? Yeah, I don't think they're doing a bad job in, on mobile. I think I think that's overplayed. Um, I mean, I, everyone I know uses the Facebook app on their phone and and uses it more than they do on their PC. Um, you know, are they doing the best job in the world? No, but um, as mobile goes as it exists today, I, I don't think Facebook is is uh, is that far behind. All right. Well, we will find out soon enough, won't we? Facebook IPO uh, coming Friday, right? It's expected, yeah. If all yeah. if all goes as 
if the filings continue right. as we anticipate. Zuckerberg not expected to ring the bell. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Apparently, uh, he'll be busy back in Silicon Valley doing his thing. He'll be coding. They don't like him on the East Coast. He's too <laughs> sloppy. With his hoodie. <laughs> with, the, hoodie. with his hoodie and his, and his flip-flops. Come on. And his billions of dollars, yes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. Well, you might need a little money uh, to buy Facebook stock, uh, possibly. We're not making a recommendation there. But if you do need a little money, we can make a recommendation there. Thanks to our sponsor, Gazelle. This episode of Tech News Today brought to you by Gazelle. You want that new iPad, latest iPhone, or an Android smartphone? Sell your old one. Used iPhones, used iPads, iPods, Macs, or smartphones to Gazelle and get some cash. Upgrade. Go to gazelle.com right now. Get a risk-free quote. Your quotes are good for up to 30 days. And remember, you know, gadgets don't get more valuable over time. They're not antiques. Not until they're like 50 or 100 years old. They, they, they get less valuable over time. So be sure to go to gazelle.com right now. Take that old gadget. Put in the correct model. Uh, tell them what condition it's in, what kind, of, uh, what kind of cables you've got still with it. They'll give you a quote. You'll lock in that quote for 30 days. So don't delay. Go do it right now. Uh, they'll revise your offer higher even if your product's actually in better condition. So there's no reason to delay. Just like when you drive your car off the lot, your gadgets lose value over time. Go to gazelle.com right now. Get the best offer for your gadgets. Uh, and then you'll get paid in cash. You can get paid by PayPal. Get an Amazon gift certificate. Visit gazelle.com for your risk-free quote today. And we thank Gazelle for their support of Tech News Today. Onward into some phone news. Samsung uh, Galaxy S3, some quick news here. Uh, they've updated their list of phones slated to get an ice cream sandwich update. Uh, so if you're a T-Mobile user, uh, they finally clarified that. That was the one major carrier in the U.S. they hadn't updated. Galaxy S2, Galaxy S Blaze 4G, Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus, and the Galaxy Tab 10.1 are all now added to the list of phones that will receive ice cream sandwich. We don't know when. I don't know why they tell you that. I mean, uh, you better give me ice cream sandwich. They never tell you a date. Uh, Samsung's <laughs> manual for the Samsung Galaxy S3 also available for download. Uh, off the Samsung website. This isn't a leak or anything. They're making it available in advance of the May 29th launch in Europe. 186 pages, and you can find out a lot about the generic version of the Galaxy S3. It'll yeah, be a so different this is, version. This is not the version that any of us would see attached to the little carrier bells and whistles or crapware, as they're sometimes known as. Yeah, even hardware changes here mm -hmm. in the U.S. I love that. It's the phone design for humans. It's a 186-page manual. But there are some really cool features that I didn't... I don't remember uh, Samsung mentioning. Like, like voice calls? Voice calls, yes. You hold it there's, up there's to your, actually a Oh, you're talking about something else. On page 26, wow. there is a feature. Legacy features. Yeah, if you want to do that. But there's some interesting things, like to, for Bluetooth, if you want to search for Bluetooth devices, you shake the phone. And I know I've wanted to do that very often, like, just find the Bluetooth thing, and then we'll do it. So that's kind of neat. Pan and zoom, they have, you can just push uh, your thumb down and move your finger around, mm -hmm. move the phone around, uh, that is, and it'll pan. So a lot of, like, features that you do have to explain at some point, but, I mean, like, these, these seem pretty neat. Like, to mute, just, like, palm. Just put your palm around the little full screen. Takes care of all that stuff. I'm like, pretty neat little features that I probably wouldn't notice because that Samsung uh, press event was a little bit all over the place when they introduced it. And uh, just a minor note, uh, the HSPA Plus version of the Samsung Galaxy S3, that, that's that hardware uh, model that I mentioned for the U.S., with its 2100 milliamp hour battery, has arrived at the FCC, so that's for sure. Uh, it will be unlocked, globally available May 29th. So if you're into imports, you can buy it and use it on the HSPA Plus networks here in the U.S. Chris, are you at all excited about the Galaxy S3? Are you, are you there? Mm -hmm. We are don't you hear muted you again? on the mute. Am I, am I having trouble? Oh, again? there you go. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm an iPhone guy, so uh, any, any new uh, Android phones never really get me too excited. I, I have enjoyed the ones that, I, that I've tested and, and uh, experienced. But, uh, yeah, this one looks as good as any of the other ones, but there's, you know, a hundred other ones that are awfully good too, aren't there? What about AMD second-generation APUs? Now there, you're getting some excitement out of me. <laughs> All right, good. Because uh, AMD's launching their second-generation A series of APUs. These are the ones codenamed Trinity. Uh, it's AMD's Ivy Bridge competitor. They claim a 28% CPU and 56% GPU performance increase over Lano. That was their previous version. And they're claiming 12-hour battery life. And remember, an APU means that you get a discrete integrated graphics card. Or, I'm sorry, it's not discrete integrated. It's a discrete graphic card uh, GPU on the die 
with the CPU. Uh, these are going to come in several flavors. One is a dual core, but only 17 watt version. Uh, I believe that is the ultra low voltage 2.1 gigahertz A6. Uh, there's also 25 watt quad core versions and 35 watt quad core versions. These are still 32 nanometers, though. They, even though they're competitors with Ivy Bridge, they're not down to the nanometer scale of Ivy Bridge, and they're based on the pile driver uh, micro architecture. What do you get? Well, you get you get that discrete GPU. It's uh, VLIW4 based on the Radeon HD7000. It supports DirectX 11. Uh, it's going to come on Acer, Asus, HP, Lenovo, Samsung, Sony, and Toshiba. They've all got laptops coming with these. But you may say, okay, spec man, all of your mumbo jumbo and your acronyms mean nothing to me. What is this going to do for my laptop? Well, it's going to make it thinner. It's going to make it use less power. And the big thing they're pushing with Trinity is that it's great for gaming and video. It's fact optimized uh, to get 30 frames per second video. And they say Ivy Bridge can't, can't handle that. You're going to be able to do video on these small, thin laptops that you can't do with any other processor. Yeah, and they're right to push that because I've seen some benchmarks. And for CPU, the Ivy Bridge stuff pretty much kicks this thing's butt all the time. And that's one of the issues. Even older versions of uh, was it Sandy Bridge was beating up some of these APUs at this point when it came to you know actually using the CPU. But when it came to video and GPU stuff, the AMD was quite competitive on these things. And, and don't forget, AMD does not charge anywhere near as much as, as Intel does. So you're going to get some pretty good performance, or actually comparable performance, at least in video gaming, when it comes to things like versions of the sleek book and other, other AMD-powered devices. Yeah, imagine the Lenovo's we were talking about earlier with the AMD processors in them. Uh, now, does that get you excited, Chris Null? That is very exciting. Actually, the uh, the APU idea I've been I've been pumped for uh, for years, and it's um, it's just been so slow in coming to coming to, to fruition. The old APUs um, they just don't uh, they don't really perform much better than integrated graphics do. And finally, it looks like with Trinity that AMD has something that is really going to offer significant graphics benchmark benchmark improvement over what you're getting with integrated. Now, it's not going to get you anywhere near what you get with discrete graphics, but uh, for somebody, if you want to do gaming in a thin and light notebook or an ultra book even, uh, something in that form factor, this might be uh, this might be in a way to actually get it done finally. And our final story actually uh, is trying to move past the need to have a graphic card at all. Just don't even worry about it. Offsource it into the cloud. Uh, at the 2012 GPU Technology Conference in San Jose, NVIDIA announced two new Kepler-based processing units for high-performance computing. Uh, it's part of their CUDA 5 platform. A Tesla K10, based on the GK104, uh, that's the, the same that's found in the GTX 680 and 690. That's going to be available immediately. And the Tesla K20, based on a GK110 core, and that'll be available in Q4. Now, these are for pros. These are for folks who want maximum performance, smart resource allocation, good energy efficiency in, like, rack-mounted hardware, data center hardware. But along with these cards uh, are a couple other very interesting announcements that can affect your life. The world's first GPU for cloud computing, uh, the NVIDIA VGX platform, meant to be implemented in a data center with these with these new K10 and K20 chips, allowing, uh, say, your, your employees in an enterprise to access a virtual machine from any device, can serve up to 100 users. They showed off an iPad running Citrix receiver connected to VGX and running 3D simulations and Autodesk on Windows. And then they showed a MacBook Air accessing the ILM, Render farm, yeah, that ILM. The folks who worked on Avengers and Battleship, uh, the guy made some real time changes to those very films uh, scenes right from his MacBook Air and was a and was able to operate it over the cloud. And here's where it gets to to mean something for you. They're planning to bring it to gamers as well. They've partnered with Gaikai with for something called the GeForce Grid GPU. There's a lot of terminology being thrown around here, but essentially what this does is reduce the latency of streaming games to just 10 milliseconds by capturing and encoding game frames rapidly and in a single pass. I'm promising that the enhanced Gaikai service would be available on TVs, tablets, and smartphones. They showed a demo of an unreleased game called Hawken being played by one guy on an Asus Transformer Prime and another guy on his LG Cinema TV. It's a smart move for NVIDIA. I mean, it's just, it, they, you know, they're working on their mobile processors with Tegra. They have, they have uh, discrete graphics for desktops, which is kind of, I guess, I would say almost fading away. 
but they're making sure that they have something that when you're using a low-powered device, something in the future, maybe like a cheap tablet, you can get them really low cost at some point, you don't have to worry about the processing because NVIDIA's got it on the back end. Because I'm really in- intrigued by this. Because if, if people are slamming, you know, let's say AMD's products saying, oh, they can't handle this. It's like, well, who cares? You can just always do everything on the cloud anyway. And NVIDIA's got some really interesting products for this. Yeah, I, I mean, this, this could be no more game consoles. You just you could play console quality games, the latest versions over the cloud on whatever hardware you got. I mean, that was the promise of OnLive when they launched, mm-hmm. and Nvidia is getting in and saying, "Hey, we we can power that and make it even better." And the more they can diminish that lag, that's the thing. I mean, the latency. Somebody's always going to perceive that if it's ten milliseconds or less than that. Someone's going to say it's not the same as if it was right here, right now. But if they can bring that down to the point where people aren't noticing it and they never even think about it then that's, that could be the end of consoles, or we don't have to worry about the upgrade cycle. That's all taken care of on the back end. This kind of stuff is just, you know, just a little front-end machine. Chris, that makes, that yeah, makes mobile gaming a, a different market, too. I mean, uh, if, you can, if you can stream 3D gaming to a cell phone, and that's a, that's a, that's a, new, that's a sea change. And then we'll all panic about data caps at that point. That's <laughs> all I can think of right now. Uh-huh. It sounds great. Until you get towards the end of the month and then you don't have any more fun to have because you've blown through all of your data. I think that's what will help us get data caps either gone or loosened up. Because there are too many services that we wouldn't be able to take advantage of and these companies are going to have to start working together. Yeah, and and they'll work on your behalf. uh, Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope that's the case because it, it, it just worries me. You know, that's the problem with the cloud that just worries me. All right, I'm, I'm too much, I, I'm too worried not to go under the news fuse. <laughs> <laughs> Crush and burn. T-Mobile CEO Philip Hum is worried too. He sent out a memo to employees telling them of the company's plans to restructure. Back in March, Hum announced layoffs with a net loss of 1,000 jobs. The memo about the restructuring did not detail how many others will be out of work, but T-Mobile has confirmed with news outlets that 900 jobs will be cut. If you're worried about Chrome and syncing tabs across multiple machines when you're logged into it, an update to Chrome will bring just that. A stable version of Chrome 19 is out today, but the tab sync feature will be rolled out in the coming weeks. The feature will also work on Chrome for Android beta. Well, that Chrome tab sync feature might be a lot more interesting to a lot more people because MacWire Equities Research says that Google Chrome could be coming to iOS. Now, the firm says the app would be approved this quarter and believes the move is partially motivated for financial reasons because Google pays Apple for the use of Google searches in Safari for iOS. can't make it your default, though. No, and if you can't make it your default, it's going to be so annoying. Oh, yeah, oddly, the, the, Very cumbersome. the firm was like, well, they have a lot of penetration on Android. It's like, well, yeah, because you can do that. You can change it. Yeah. The Counting Crows. Remember them when you were sitting around the glass table in the 90s? In a long December. Yeah, they've released Season four tracks from their new album for free. In a partnership with BitTorrent. What? The band's lead singer, Adam Duritz, likened BitTorrent to a radio station, saying it's actually better because people can play songs as much as they want. The band is asking listeners to buy the full album if they want more. ESPN executive Sean Bratches says that the network would consider including its Watch ESPN app on the Apple TV with authentication. Watch ESPN is already already available on some Xboxes, and Bratches said we're a platform agnostic content company. Before you start getting too giddy, ESPN said a deal isn't imminent. Mm. Like the look of those Google glasses, but wish somebody else made them? Well, tough. Google has patented the ornamental design of its Google Glasses. The design, the device frame and the de- display device are covered by three patents. Now, these are design patents that only cover the look of the glasses, and Google could license the, that out. So maybe not so tough. All right. Uh, do you want a Hackintosh by Star? Well, tough. The United States Supreme Court refused to hear Star's case. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit decision stopped Star from selling OS X powered machines without Apple's approval. With the Supreme Court deciding not to review the case, it looks like the end of Star's hackintoshes. You want me to skip this new news fuse? Yeah. Tough. The Wall Street Journal reports that Google plans to give OEMs early access to future versions of Android, like Jelly Bean, and Google would sell those devices directly to consumers in the U.S., Asia, and Europe. Instead of just pairing with one single manufacturer, Google's looking at as many as five partners to build a line of Nexus devices that would include tablets and also phones. The line should be ready by late November. 
Which means jelly bean in November? That's strange. <laughs> well, forget about that and forget about the Apple iTV because LG showed off its Google TV-enabled TV and it's really got some snazzy specs. It's the first 3D-enabled Google television. It comes with, uh, the television also comes with a dual-core CPU. So now we're worried about processors in televisions. That's awesome. Additionally, it comes with LG's Magic Remote, which lets you wave the remote around to control it and has a mic to handle voice commands. Don't worry. Randomizer. Randomizer. A NeoGAF forum poster has finished Diablo 3 oh. in a record time. Uh, starting at launch, which was last night, if you could get through the errors, and playing straight through for 12 hours and 29 minutes. He played it as a barbarian and reached level 32 by the time he finished. Wow. I just like hearing playing as a barbarian. That just sounds humorous to me. Well, you could be a witch doctor. There are also reports that others have finished the whole thing in just seven hours. They weren't the first. Is that what? Seven hours? Yeah, That's MMO site like... reports that several players have claimed to do it and have at least screenshots to back them up, so it seems legit. I would say slow down. I would Enjoy say... Enjoy the Diablo. Wait, yeah. It's like wolfing down at Rupert Float too quickly. I mean, it's gone <laughs> well, before a, you even have a chance uh, to like, like wolfing it. wolfing down a whole pizza. This isn't... This is, like, <laughs> this is supposed to last you hours and hours of, of, of gameplay in 12 hours. Mm. But then you get to be the guy or girl who says, first, people like that too. It's like going to Chez Panisse and just being like, I can eat fast. <laughs> yeah, watch me. <laughs> Four courses. Blink of an eye. Ha! Done. Yeah. Bring me more. What do I win? Except I can't pay Nothing? for it. Nothing? Shoot. I can't afford that. Spent money. <laughs> Let's check the calendar. The Oracle versus Google patent case is now in the hands of a jury. Lawyers for both companies presented their closing arguments this morning. Judge Alsup did order that Google should submit a detailed offer as proof as uh, to Nexus, explaining that the correlation of the test files... Nine lines and rain check with infringers, profits, and yada, yada, yada. You've been following all this, so this all makes sense to you, right? Have you been following this, Chris? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't yada, yada through a patent case then. That, uh, <laughs> that's unfair. Um, this is, uh, Google should submit this uh, by 9 p.m. Uh, this evening, uh, Pacific time. So it's not over yet, but we are, we are inching along. And finally, Verizon's 4G LTE is spreading to 28 new markets on May 17th. Um, markets like Lake Charles, Louisiana, Joseph, Michigan, uh, Newcastle, Northern Cabria County, Oil City, Franklin, Somerset, and York in Pennsylvania, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, Mitchell, San Diego, play, Paris, play, Texas, play Burlington, the, Northern incoming, Vermont. Incoming oh, I'm sorry. We cut, we uh, we don't have time to name all of the towns. The message just showed up. Time How for rude. a rude message. Uh, our incoming message is an email from Jeff Spencer today. He says, your show is the only one I hear about the Apple ProView iPad name lawsuit. I've actually got a working 15-inch ProView iPad LCD monitor. As the case is coming close to a settlement, seems like a good time to put together some image or joke for feedback on your show. But I'm having trouble figuring out the best way to make this funny. Static image of the iPad home screen on the monitor? It might be funny. Uh, video of me trying to touch the icons on that image because <laughs> it's not a touch monitor. Uh, video of someone actually touching using an iPad menu on this monitor. Craigslist ad for a 15-inch iPad. I think that's the winner right there. That's funny. Yeah. Do not lie. I think if he can complete Diablo 3 in six hours on that monitor, there we go. Yeah. And then he can say, I, I completed Diablo 3 in six hours on an iPad monitor. There you go. You can, you can hook up an Apple TV to it and then AirPlay mirroring with the iPad just to mess with it. Mess I love, with people. I love the way the picture he sent is uh, it, it almost looks like somebody just took a sticker that they printed themselves that said iPad and just stuck it on the monitor. It really, yeah. That, but that's, that's, that's pretty that's much actually as, the way it looks. That's how strong their claims are too. <laughs> oh, actually, I think, they're a little I think that is a sticker, you well, guys. It's still there. It's been around for years, so it's pretty strong. Also, I think it is. There's also I, a little I, coffee stain or I, something. I think it's a sticker affixed by ProView. That coffee stain is structural. It helps what? keep it together. This is, somebody needs to clean this thing up before they sell it anywhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got we to gotta clean up after ourselves here. So thanks, everyone, uh, for watching or listening. Submitting stories in our subreddit, technewstoday.reddit.com. That is the place to let us know what stories you'd like us to cover on the show. Uh, we appreciate everyone who submits stories uh, and who votes them up or down. Voting, if not more important, is definitely as important as submitting stories. And big thanks to our moderators in there as well. Chris Knoll, thank you for joining us as always. And let folks know where they can find parts of your empire online. Uh, how about swallow me on Twitter today at Christopher Knoll? 
Christopher Null. Spell it out. Yeah. Christopher C H R I S T O P H E R. Null. Huh. All words. Using your name as a Twitter handle. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, progressive. It's progressive. You're, you're clever. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it'd ever work for me, though. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, it's much too late. Uh, thanks again, Chris. Always good to have you. Sure. Thanks for having me on the show. And thanks to you folks for listening or watching. You can find us on the web, twit.tv slash TNT. You can email us. Our email address is TNT at twit.tv. Give us a call and leave us a voicemail. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number. And, of course, find us live every day at live.twit.tv around 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If we don't see you there, we'll see you on demand. And we'll also see you tomorrow when we have someone else with us. Martin Martin Giles. Giles from The Economist. All right. See that. We're turning Jason too. <laughs> that was awesome. Note to self. That's funny. <laughs> I, I try to bring some lulls to this show.